Fukakai na boku o subete o, or Love Me for Who I Am, is the kindest, most empathetic, sweetest, most sincere, nicest manga I've ever read. I have to consider it a 10 out of 10 for me personally because its existence is something I view as kind of necessary. I really, really, really wish this manga had existed when I was a teenager. This manga opens by introducing us to the main characters Iwaoka Tetsu and Mogumo Rinosuke. Our introduction comes from Tetsu's perspective and he views his classmate Mogumo, or Mogu-chan, as a boy who dresses like a girl. Everyone in class understands Mogumo this way. Most of them are just sort of dismissive or derisive of Mogu-chan, not really understanding how to deal with them, and Mogu has never really made much of an effort to try and be understood, instead simply running away. But Tetsu sees Mogu-chan making a wish to find someone that understands them, and that's when he decides to reach out and invite Mogu-chan to come to his big sister's cafe. Tetsu's older sister, Iwaoka Satori, is a trans woman, although she hasn't quite identified herself that way yet at the very start of the story. She still refers to herself as Tetsu's older brother and tends to present as male in public and also to disguise the fact that she has a boyfriend. However, Satori has created a cafe called Question, which markets itself directly as a ladyboy cafe, a term which she had apparently picked up from anime. In this cafe are working three self-identifying ladyboys, Tenmaru Inui, also known as Tenchan, who identifies as a boy but loves to cosplay into anything cute and therefore will completely embody a feminine character during cosplay. So Suzumi, who simply identifies as a ladyboy, considering himself a gay man but who likes to dress as a woman and act as a woman at all times. And lastly, Mei Tatebayashi, who initially also identifies as a ladyboy but eventually comes out as a trans girl in an arc that I'll describe in just a moment. Tetsu introduces Mogumo into this environment expecting that they will find understanding among these people, that they must be similar to all of them. However, at this point, all of them are identifying themselves as lady boys, with the fact that they are boys underneath being an essential element of how the cafe presents itself. And this is not what Mogumo desires. Mogumo says, I am not a boy. I don't want to have to tell people I'm a boy. I don't want to identify as a boy at all. Mogumo also isn't sure that they want to consider themselves a girl. Even though they like to wear cute clothes and have certain feminine tendencies, they don't necessarily see themselves as automatically being a girl because of those things. This fact causes friction between Mogumo and Mei, as Mei actually does self-identify as a woman, but thinks that it would be selfish to consider herself a woman when she wasn't assigned female at birth. She sees it as being somehow selfish to call herself a girl, even though being considered a girl fills her with such intense gender euphoria that she immediately realizes she can't go back. Mogumo's arrival at this cafe basically causes a chain reaction transition for Mei and for Tetsu's older sister, Satori, who does does identify as a trans woman, but basically hadn't told anyone to stop considering her as an older brother and as a man underneath. Whereas when Tetsu finally says, do you want me to consider you as my sister, Satori is of course delighted by the suggestion and completely dissolves any pretense of still being a man after that point. But none of this changes Mogumo's lack of desire to identify with either gender. Mogumo wants to be loved just simply without having to make a decision about that. Mogumo doesn't want to use the male or the female bathroom. Mogumo is in love with a man but isn't concerned about whether that makes them gay or straight or whatever that might mean. They're just a couple. It is what it is. Everyone throughout this series has to face the pressure of dealing with a society that doesn't accept or understand them immediately, including Mogumo's very tragic home life that gets explored in depth in the later couple of volumes, and ultimately resolved in a way that is as heartwarming and empathetic as everything else in the series would make you come to expect. We learn about how Mogumo's style of dress was largely inspired by 
their younger sister, Sakura Mogumo, who Mogachan basically wanted to be like all throughout life because everything that was denied to them because of it being feminine was given to Sakura. And so Sakura became this portrait of everything that Mogu wanted to be. And so when Mogu started to grow an Adam's apple, they turned a knife in on it and had to be stopped by their mother, who had a mental break after that, and Mogu ended up moving out to live on her own with an allowance, just to reduce the stress within the family, which of course ended up doing the opposite. And so Sakura is trying to bring Mogu back into the family, and uh, it goes in some really dramatic and great directions. I won't spoil any more than that. There's also a major arc about Mogumo's best friend, Kotone Mizunoe. Kotone has been a friend of the Mogumo family since she was a kid, and since she hung out with what she saw as basically a pair of sisters all growing up, she is used to the way that Mogu-chan is, but also didn't necessarily see her as a woman, simply because she wanted Mogu-chan to be a man that she is comfortable around, because she's actually not comfortable around men and is only attracted to women. But she doesn't want to be a lesbian, she doesn't want to have that on her consciousness or on her family, and so she has been running away from it her whole life and projecting a lot of that onto Mogu-chan, which ends up blowing up in her face once Mogu completely falls in love with someone else. Mogumo and Tetsukun are pretty much a couple from like page one of this manga. Like they uh, literally I think in chapter two start going out and the development of their relationship is absolutely precious. I couldn't ask for better as a central relationship in a manga like this. It's not super prevalent because it's mostly in the style of what we would usually consider a cute girls doing cute things show but given the breadth of gender identity here, I'm just gonna call it a cute teenagers doing cute things show. This had more compelling emotional arcs than I'm used to from that genre as a big fan of it. The focus on gender identity gives the story a core theme that it can work from to draw all of its drama out of, and it just does such an incredible job of representing LGBT themes. It's crazy to think that from what I've heard, the author didn't know that much about trans experience before creating this manga and must have just done some incredible research because it feels so spot on. Around 10 years ago, I had an idea for a story that I wanted to tell about a trans magical girl and the main core point of it was that the character would be someone who everyone knew was signed male at birth but considered to be a girl and just accepted for who they are and this manga pretty much captured exactly the feelings that I wanted to but without breaking from the present moment of reality and showing actually how you could find that acceptance within reality. The strength in numbers, the strength in putting yourself out there even in the most minor way like happening to make a wish tied to a tree in front of one of your classmates who happens to have a trans sister. Any degree of reaching out is better than not and will empower you towards you know, potentially learning your way through how to live as yourself in this reality. I've found a way to do it. I believe you can too. And this manga is a powerful, powerful message of hope. So please read it and uh, find more of my writing on goldenwitch.substack.com. Find me all over social media as Golden Witch Fire. Support me on Patreon through patreon.com slash goldenwitchfire. Listen to my hip hop reviews on the Jittery Zeitgeist podcast and subscribe to the ASE Presents channel where you'll find the new Void Gazers podcast that I do as well. Thanks again for watching and never forget manga forever.